and you can write it in your diary that today I wore outfit number 23 and so that if you met someone on that day and you're going to meet them again in a month's time you make sure you don't wear outfit 23 again <laughs> brilliant power to live more with Joe Dodds welcome to the power to live more podcast all about productivity organization well-being energy and resilience I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello. My name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter, and today Jo is interviewing Gail Morgan, another of Paula Gardner's introductions to us. We love you, Paula Gardner. Thank you. Gail Morgan is a starlit image expert with over 25 years' experience. Her mission is to simplify the art of getting dressed so that you can enjoy wearing clothes that flatter your body and support your lifestyle. She works with the wardrobes of corporative and private clients, as well as running a style training academy for independent personal stylists. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Gail Morgan of Study and Style Training and Gail Morgan Style. So hi Gail, thanks for joining me. Hi Joe, great to be here. So start by telling us all about you, what you do and where you do it. Okay, <laughs> so I have worked in the image industry for the last 25 years, which has been a fabulous um, privilege for me. And I work with uh, time-pressed professionals in their wardrobe, helping them feel more confident about the clothes that they wear, but equally just building their confidence on how they present themselves generally and also helping them to raise their visibility. And so I also have trained people to become image consultants, uh, personal stylists and personal shoppers um, through my studying style uh, programs as well because I had the privilege of working for John Lewis and helping to set up their uh, fashion advisory service um, about 15 years ago and um, helping them to set up their personal shopping suites around the country. Lovely. And then when I said where you do it, did you earlier say in their wardrobes? Was that your term? (laughs) You don't really mean it, do you? Yeah, absolutely. Some people, if they if they if they're brave, I can go into their wardrobes <laughs> and help them organise their clothes. Um, equally, it could be um, I'm I'm based in um, Southern England, so in Hertfordshire, but I uh, travelled for personal clients, um, you know, sort of to London, home counties, and anywhere in the country if they want if they'll pay me to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but also for my training, I can train people worldwide because all my training is online, and so it can be ex- accessed through your computer. Lovely, excellent. So, so it's it's helping people directly with their own style, their own wardrobes, but also then helping other people to help other people. Exactly. And then working, so working with in private individuals and corporates as well, because, mm. but we're all people, so, and we all have the same issues. So, yeah. you know, it's how get dressed in the morning, really. It's great to be talking to somebody who has lots of different aspects to their business and activities, because <laughs> you sound as busy as I do in lots of different ways. <laughs> juggling and it's deciding which hat but I think you know all of it is about the simplicity and making it easy for people to train or to um you know to 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 get dressed you know to find their own personal brand their own image that's going to help them succeed in whatever aspect of their life they want to succeed yes excellent well you're talking to somebody who pretty much wears the same uh, clothes all the time just changes my top to a different color <laughs> i took a leaf out of um uh what's his face the um apple guy what's his name steve jobs is i don't just wear black <laughs> he's just got a he had a wardrobe just of um of black polo necks exactly and that was his that was his go-to uniform and for some people, that's great. And it's a great time saver as well, mm. uh, because you don't have that decision to make in the morning. And it doesn't have to be necessarily as extreme as he had. Um, 
but you know Obama used to wear grey grey or navy suits, and um, Angela Merkel will always wear trouser suits. So they find a style that works for them and just tweak it slightly, mm. so that you don't have those kind of you know distractions and all those decision extra decisions to make um, when deciding what to wear. No, exactly. It's all gone wrong for me, though. I sing in a choral society and we have a concert on Saturday. And because we're doing a light programme, some bright spark decided that instead of our usual black outfit, in which case I just wear a black dress, we've now got to wear black bottoms and a colourful top. So now I'm traumatised. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, there we go. So, um, so talk about uh, what, what your sort of daily routine your 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 sort of um working life looks like I, I imagine a bit like me you've got um different things for different activities because you're traveling as well as being at home and, and that sort of thing as well so I guess there's never a typical day but g- give us a sort of flavor for the sorts of things you're doing how you're working with people and, and how that impacts how you do that yeah I'm, I mean I, there isn't a typical day because I you know if I'm training face to face or I'm going to a client then obviously I'm I'm not going to be in the office um so those days <clears throat> excuse me are going to be different but if I've got office based days I know that I work best in the morning and if I need to write something if I need to really get my head down and focus it's got I've got to hit it the ground running as early as possible well, not as early as possible but as soon as possible yeah and I've really you know got to switch everything else off all those sort of things you may have heard from other people but it, it works and you know it's amazing you can be I've achieved so much by half past nine and you suddenly go gosh I've still got the whole morning ahead of me but I've done all of the, the written bit that I needed to do or I've, I've written five, you know, three blog posts and I've got them out of the way. Uh, so that definitely works for me. And amazingly, I seem to suddenly get an, another sudden burst of energy about four o'clock in the afternoon as well. So I kind of, you know, I think understanding your, the best times for you mm. in a day and when you're, you're most focused is, is great and there'll be other people who are, are able to work into the night and that's fine for them you know but it, for me I, I've, I know that I'm best tackling the the tough stuff first thing mm. and having that focus time and and switching off from you know social media uh, interruptions as far as possible because I know that's my biggest time suck is email and, yeah. um, and Facebook yeah and when you're traveling how do you sort of stop yourself being overwhelmed by not having that sort of time that you might have if you're in the office um and by traveling i mean luckily i've got um a a va and a a part-time assistant so they can take up some of the slack you know of the office work in that sense Mm -hmm. and again i think just if, if i get the opportunity to have a bit of space and do some writing then great but i mean when you when you're training particularly your your the energy is so absorbing when you're actually training that you you you've got to get rest in between you can't be trying to do too much work no. um i found that actually it's it's almost counterproductive so i mean i'll i'll check my emails i'll make sure that they're kind of organized and I've scanned them and maybe read some of them but other than that i wouldn't try and do any other work no. because you when you're training for days at a time, you know, if I'm doing a, a bit, one of my long courses, I'm not going to want to be trying to be interrupted or writing something else. You've got to focus on, on what's happening and, and also on the people who are on the course. Yeah. 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 So what about the end of the day? So you get your sort of burst of energy at, at four o'clock. Do you have a sort of hard finish time or do you sort of vary that again, depending on what's happening? Um, I, my hard finish time is seven o'clock. Absolutely. You know, that's when I finish and it will usually be earlier, but I, you know, I've made a, a vow that I'm not working after after seven o'clock. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I say that, I mean, occasionally I might have um, consultant calls or something like that because I do a monthly uh, Q and a call for my consultants and I vary that between a lunchtime and an evening call uh, so that I can hit people at different time zones. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I, 
I'm not good in the evening for concentrating, as I've just said, you know, so that's definitely going to be my downtime. I'll go to the gym, I'll go to Pilates, I belong to a choir as well, or I'll just relax, you know, so that's that's what I'll be doing at, in after seven o'clock or, as I say, yeah. sometimes I start at six, so I'll be at Pilates at six o'clock, so that's it. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a bit about how you make sure you get, get the stuff done. You've already mentioned a, a VA and a, an assistant, which... Um, it's obviously, a, you know, not everyone can sort of afford to invest in that within businesses, but that those people that, that, that can, you know, can really sort of ramp up the sort of uh, work that they're doing and also, you know, focus on the stuff that they're good at and want to do and, and you know, in effect, outsource the rest of it. Um, tell us a bit more about that and about how you, you know, get things done, how you manage a to-do list and that sort of thing. Um, well, definitely delegating some of the, the tasks you don't like is, is good. Um, <laughs> that really helps so as soon as you can afford it I would definitely recommend it um but so do you mean technology that I use or kind of just things that I do yeah all all and all of the above (laughs) so what I've found technology wise that's good is um certainly sharing documents with my VAs are um is Dropbox um because that's right to share docs in that sense um and also what one of my videos does most of my social media updates for me and so um we use well she uses it mostly hootsuite to schedule um uh posts and things but we'll write that together we've got a spreadsheet that i'll check through and then she uploads that from the um onto hootsuite from the spreadsheet um and so we've got that spreadsheet which runs you know it's continuous and um so I can check back to maybe posts that we've done in the past off there as well. Um, but she loads it and then I will go in at certain times of the day and just double check what's going on on Facebook or on uh, Twitter. We use a little bit and we're, we're upping our, the, um, our presence on, on LinkedIn. Um, we're just about to start to do that. Mm-hmm. So I will go in those to those um, places a couple of times a day and then comment or add a bit more or add another link to something so that again we're keeping on top of the, the social media that way mm, yeah and what about sort of personally um, getting stuff done do you have a to-do list or do you use technology for that or bits of paper <laughs> post-it notes <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a bit of a post-it note girl I'm afraid I, um, I do have- as an extra as well so interesting <laughs> I seem to be using a lot of post-it notes at the moment. I do have a diary, a big um, A4, um, A4 size diary, and I tend to write my to-do lists in there and, and then transfer them over. Um, I'm working through um, the one thing at the moment, the book. Oh, love it, um, love it, uh, yeah. So I'm, uh, we've just been honing it right down to, I don't, and again, I don't know if you've read a book called uh, Does It Make the Boat Go Faster or no. something like that. Oh. But I don't know if that's the name of the book, but uh, this guy who he was on the Olympic rowing team. Yeah. And they had a phrase that anything that they were doing whilst they were training, because I think they were sort of in bronze medal position, but they w- wanted to obviously to be in gold. Yeah. And um, so they didn't have long in their preparation, maybe a few months. And it was like everything that they did in those few months is it going to make the boat go faster was their phrase yeah. <laughs> almost like you know is what i'm doing going to get me to my ultimate goal mm-hmm. in but it's just a nice kind of term to kind of use and you can always write it up on your on your wall and say boat faster question <laughs> mark and um, and it just kind of, from the productivity point of view, it stops the faffing. And I think that's kind of linked to the one thing as well. Yes. <clears throat> and in that, that's, that where, that's where they talk about what's the one thing you can do that either, what's it, it's, it means you don't have to do everything else or, I can't remember what the phrase is now. Yeah, what's the one, oh yeah, oh, it's, it's, I can dig it out, I've got it on the side here. But uh, yeah, so if I, if, I, if I don't do anything else, it's going to take take me to the to the to the ultimate goal. Yeah. But yes, it's it's great sort of having the one goal and then the, the goal below that and then the thing below that, and it just makes you. I think when you're multitasking the whole time, which they completely say don't do. Yes. Um, it's focusing on one thing, which will get you to the thing to the next step. Yeah. And then, but they've got the big goal to kind of aim for as well yes and um, they use that analogy don't they of the um dominoes that if you, yeah. you know if you hit the one domino what does it then sort of lead to so uh yeah no that's it's a great book isn't it 
Yeah, I'm about about two thirds of the way through at the moment, so I haven't quite got to the end of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's ha- certainly helped me to re- restructure my thinking for the rest of this year um, yeah. to think about where I'm going. So mm-hmm. that's really good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'd recommend that one. Cool. And the other thing I use um, really, really effectively is um, the Google Calendar. is my lifesaver. So again, I can block out and schedule times for me as well as. Um, times obviously when I'm meeting people but blocking out sections in my calendar to do stuff rather than just so I'm always having a meeting with myself rather than with somebody else and also sort of blocking out time saying do not book in anything here this is an office day stay at home do nothing else kind of thing (laughs) and when you um, block something out for you to work on something do you yeah listen to yourself because that's one of the things that I struggle with I do block times out but then I I quite often push it forwards another half an hour and then I think oh I'll start it again in another half an hour and uh, sometimes it doesn't work on the basis that I'm not I'm not as good at turning up for meetings with myself as I am with other people (laughs) yeah I think that's the hardest thing I mean I do have at eight o'clock on every Tuesday morning write a blog post doesn't always happen at that time um so I think maybe it's like um if i think if it's more immediate and you've just put it into the diary rather than something that's set in stone and comes in every day or every tuesday morning mm-hmm. yeah. um you're, I, I personally am more likely to do it then whereas something that's kind of just there you kind of oh, well, i'll just ignore that and i'll move on and do it at some point yeah and you maybe don't yeah so i know exactly maybe, what you mean yeah, yeah yeah i had i had made myself laugh this, laugh this morning i was um I'd planned in to walk down to town and do a bit of um, work that I could do on my phone in a coffee shop thinking, you know, I'd sort of get some steps in, have a bit of a uh-huh. lush time in the in my favourite coffee shop and, um, and, you know, get some stuff done. And I wasn't going to go because my back was hurting. So I came up with all these excuses <laughs> why I wasn't going to do it. And then I thought, no, a walk would probably be good for my back, so I'll do it. And then it completely went all completely wrong because I had a really good time, did a lot of work and then bumped into one of my um, choir members and spent the next three quarters of an hour chatting to her about stuff that's happening with the choir and everything. So I came back having expected to do this like deep work when I got home and had run out of time. And it was my my time to get on my call with you. So, so I have to remember that with the best one in the world, popping into town may not be the best use of my time because I know lots of people. Yeah. And I, and I know I'm, I've, I've got a couple of cafes that I like to go and work in and you kind of go, no, I'm not going to go there because I'm bound to bump into someone and it's the same effect. Because that's the other thing and it, uh, is the phone because the phone can interrupt you. So if you can, I mean, you know, try and get a, like a telephone. I've got a telephone answering service so that if I want to ignore the phone, I can. Mm. Um, and it goes through to them. And it's, it's, not, it's not extortionately expensive to do that. Or you, you know, just set it to a nice answer phone message so that, you know, again, in that focus time when you're working, you just try and ignore all those distractions. Because I've read all sorts of things, you know, that if you get interrupted, it takes you so much longer to get back into the flow of where you were when you were interrupted than if you just let it go yeah exactly I, I, I use an answer service uh, as well which um but <laughs> mine is on all the time just because I don't I like, don't like answering the phone <laughs> but um yeah it can really make a difference can't it that as you say people are still being spoken to and and you know dealt with yeah. in the right sort of way but it means that you you're sort of batching the time that you're spending in calling people back and that sort of thing precisely and if, you know and they seem to you know I, I i don't get anyone saying oh you know you had a, a very obnoxious kind of person on the kit on the switchboard it was they're always really you know helpful and everything yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good um so you're talking about um the work that that you do with clients uh, regarding your your wardrobe uh, their wardrobes and that sort of thing while we're talking about sort of you know managing your time and so on um tell us a bit more about how what you do can help them to perhaps be uh, you know more productive I and mean, we talked a bit before we came on about um, uh, you know how getting up and out of the house can be um, quicker if you're more organized with your your clothes and that sort of thing so tell us a bit about how what you do fits fits with that too um, well again when you know the sort of clothes that suit you when you've um, got those clothes in your wardrobe and they suit not just suit 
your body or your coloring or your body shape as I say but they, they're right for your lifestyle as well and for your job description all those elements and the image that you want to project then it becomes a lot easier to choose the clothes to wear every day and you know it's making sure that we I as I said if I go into someone's wardrobe I'm going to clear the clutter basically mm -hmm. so that what's left in their wardrobe they could potentially wear the next day and then I have a series of, of wardrobe management charts as well, where if they want to, they can start to create outfits using, you know, usually it's like a pair of trousers or a skirt or a dress or it could be a suit um, or a jacket. But you can build outfits around that one key item and you can list them and you can list the accessories. So if you wanted to, you could say, right, today I'm going to wear outfit number 23 because <laughs> you've got Oh, you know, you've got it all in a file yeah. and you can write it in your diary that today I wore outfit number 23. And so that if you met someone on that day and you're going to meet them again in a month's time, you make sure you don't wear outfit 23 again. <laughs> Brilliant. So, <laughs> you can make, you can go down to whatever level of, of organisation and planning and structure that you want to. But basically, if you've got a, a wardrobe that's it's limited in the sense of usually it's limited by color in the sense that you've got colors that all coordinate with one another so that you're not trying to match this odd pair of shoes with that outfit with that bag with that necklace with that tie of your guy you know so it, it just depends on on your coloring and your business and your life as to which what we would put into that wardrobe because not everyone's going to have the same wardrobe and that's what makes it interesting for me, obviously, mm -hmm. because um, I make it different for everyone um, so that it, it reflects their, them and their lifestyle. Mm. I love that you pop, you can go to, to sort of, uh, you know, one extreme to the other. I, I guess, you know, you're talking with people about colours and, and styles that suit them and they can be very flexible and fairly disorganised in the wardrobe but with that information in mind <laughs> right the way through to, as you say, outfit number 23. <laughs> But it would still would work because, you know, I, I often talk to people about organising, a, packing a suitcase and that's an extreme capsule wardrobe, if you like. Yeah. Because you're just taking a limited number of clothes with you on way away on holiday. But if we had that mentality in our everyday wardrobe, it, we would just have a few more options. Mm. Mm. But very often, if and, and to, to my top tip to a pack effectively is to restrict the number of colors that you take with you because then you're not taking colors that aren't going to go with the shoes and the bags and the trousers that you've got in your core wardrobe mm -hmm. yeah that's a really good but, one I mean I, I, I'm people always laugh at me when I'm even going away for a night on business because I always take a massive suitcase but I then tell them that that's partly because I once left my laptop behind in Euston Station toilets because I couldn't fit it in my suitcase <laughs> and I was carrying it separately. So now I always take a big case on purpose. But it's sort that's sort of an excuse for the fact that then I don't have to think properly and carefully <laughs> about what I'm taking. I probably take far too much uh, because I yeah. haven't, you know, done that organisation piece. So um, interesting. And I mean, you pack an enormous amount of clothes into a into a carry-on suitcase really easily. Yeah. and um and have lots and lots of different options mm. but the key thing well one of the key things is to restrict the number of colors that you take with you and that doesn't mean that you take a whole suitcase full of black it does mean <laughs> you have other colors in there as well but it's just thinking that you know if i'm going to focus on those colors then i don't need to take my beige shoes with me or, or whatever you know yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah cool so any other sort of things around organizing tools apps that sort of thing we've listed quite a few haven't we just before we move on I mean, that we've covered a very, a very back to basics I, I use a whiteboard and a spreadsheet to track my trainees that's really handy um, so I can just swivel on my chair and look behind me and I've got all my um, live trainees if you like on a, on a, um, a whiteboard so yeah. if they contact me I can immediately uh, sort of remind myself what stage they're at and so, you know, it just keeps and it also keeps us on track if we haven't heard from them for a while to give them a nudge email, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a still visual love presentation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a visual present. And equally, you know, if I'm writing, if I'm thinking, if I'm planning, I still use pen and paper. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> still a 
It's very popular. I think it's the most often recommended item on this podcast so far. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the whiteboard thing, though. When, mostly when I turn around and look at my whiteboard, which is also behind me, um, it has doodles that my daughter has done when she's been in here talking to me. <laughs> So not particularly helpful from a work point of view, but uh, there we go. That's very pretty. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and one other thing which I can I just say, there's something I've found um, I've been using since January, which has been amazing in clearing some clutter from my inbox, is something called unroll.me. I don't yes. know if you've come across that. Yep. But that, that's been great. So it lumps together all those emails that you really shouldn't have in your inbox, but you kind of don't mind having a quick glance through at four o'clock in the afternoon or seven o'clock, you know, half past six, yeah. just to double check if I haven't missed anything, but then you can delete it all. Yeah. And, you know, it's maybe you've got 20 you know, emails in there that you, you haven't had to scroll through and look at. Yeah, yeah. 20, that's very conservative. <laughs> and, and I, I didn't know what to say there because it could have been more. <laughs> <laughs> I might have slightly guessed that. <laughs> Excellent. <Sure. laughs> so let's talk a bit about um, what you do um, from a self-care point of view. That's one of my five fundamentals. And um, uh, so, you know, covering things like diet, nutrition, exercise, sleep, that sort of thing. Do you, do you focus on those things? You've talked already about Pilates and going to the gym. So there's obviously some exercise going on. <laughs> Yeah, a bit of exercise, like to walk, sort of, but it tends to be more at the weekend than during the day. I mean, obviously, if I'm shopping with someone, then I could do a lot of walking and, and lifting of clothes at that time. Because if I'm you know, going around the shops with clients, then that's you do tend to get my 10,000 steps in then. Yeah. Um, and diet wise, I mean, one of the best things that ever happened to me was that I was diagnosed with a wheat intolerance about 20 years ago. Mm. Um and so I hadn't really eaten any wheat in that. Yeah. Um, so it's made me stay relatively slim you yeah. know, in that time. I still eat lots of food. I do eat healthily, but I just don't have bread and pastries and things like that. Mm -hmm. And So you gave it up now it became trendy. <laughs> It, I can tell you it was an awful lot harder to eat 20 years ago yeah. um, now. So it's been a revelation from that point of view. Yeah. Um, but that, that definitely helped. I and mean, obviously that's not going to be the same for everybody, but, you know, that certainly helped me mm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, as you say, it's much but, easier now, isn't it? People do understand a bit better. Although I was in a, a hotel yesterday having some lunch and I said to them, is this salad? I said, well, I went to order it and I said, oh, I don't eat gluten. I said, I'm sure it'll be all right looking at it, but can you just double check? So she came back out and she went, uh, he couldn't really give me a definitive answer. And I was like, oh, and I said, well, as long as you've not got soya sauce in the sauce, we should be all right. And then um, they came back out to give it to me and, and they put the bread down. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't need that. Thank you. I don't eat gluten. She said, oh, it's gluten free. And I'm thinking, well, you've got gluten free bread in your freezer, clearly. <laughs> And you knew that I was not going to eat gluten, but you still couldn't tell me about a salad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but there we go. So uh, a bit like, I suppose, when vegetarian people used to go out and always get just cheese omelettes. Yeah. No, not even. Well, I suppose, yeah, they could have omelettes, couldn't they? Cheese, cheese salads, because that's all anyone could think of that uh, was an option. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's much better now. It's much more, you know, much more, op um, much yeah. many more options. Yeah. Um, and then as I say, manage my energy by you know, working when I can. And I um, something that somebody else kind of recommended earlier this year was to switch off all kind of um, mobile devices. So um, laptop, iPad, you know, phone at nine o'clock in the evening mm -hmm. and to give yourself or, or and or give yourself a good hour before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, online. And that, again, has, has, you know, such a simple thing as really helped my sleep and so yeah tell us more about about that because i you know we i think we hear that advice a lot and i, I had um rachel mcginnis on uh doing a webinar last week and obviously that's one of the things that she was advising um it, it's interesting to to know that you did see that difference so it wasn't just that it seemed like a nice thing to do and you've done it you've actually seen evidence um yeah absolutely continue doing that yeah, I, mean, I was doing more because um, it, it was through a menopause coach actually who was recommending that, mm -hmm. and I know Rachel said it as well. But um, she, and it was it was just I thought well I'll try it. Yeah, but it helped me just go to sleep more and stay asleep 
you know, I don't I don't have trouble going to sleep. It's staying asleep sometimes that's the problem. Yeah. So, but it, that just amazingly seemed to help. Yes. Don't know why, but yeah it's interesting things like that as well that quite often it's like when I talk about not eating gluten I gave it up because somebody said it would be good for my underactive thyroid and then I investigated it and decided it might but then was a bit rubbish about doing it but then had a holiday where I ended up eating so much gluten that I felt terrible for six weeks when I came home and ever since then I've given it up completely because I I could actually see that difference um wow and you know it's interesting that um a lot of people hear stuff and they sort of, um, you know, discount it because they say, oh, it's, oh, you know, it's hype or, you know, everyone says that or, oh, really? But actually, if you try these things and, and do yourself a sort of a before and after and actually, you know, sort of look at how you feel or, or what the issues were and then look and see if it's changed. A lot of these things actually do the trick, but you, you, you just don't bother trying them because you just think it must all be, you know, hocus pocus or you know whatever yeah. I don't think that's a technical it's term but <laughs> you don't do it stop that. but I mean and, and I'm not a, I don't take my phone to bed or anything like that so I didn't never had sort of tech in in, in the bedroom yeah. so it was like so it wasn't like I was giving I was it was just purely doing it sitting watching telly browsing through your, your iPad you know yeah. so do it and but if I consciously switch off by sort of around nine o'clock it's and maybe it's just because I'm not reading emails and they're not on my mind as I'm going to bed it could be all those sort of things you know it's just taking that switch having that switch off time between work and play Mm. um and sleep is 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 really important yes yeah yeah excellent the other thing I would also say just as a top tip is that just don't answer emails late at night either because what image does that give if you're running your own business what image does that give to your the recipient of that email if they look at the time that it was sent so if you send it at three o'clock in the morning you know are you an insomniac are you going to be able to do the job kind of thing yeah. unless you work with people who are on the other side of the world obviously then that yeah. might have something to do with it yeah but just you know that it's the image isn't just what you look like visually it's all sorts of other things as well yeah is built up your personal brand and your image so think about that as well exactly that's why I have to keep pushing the it's all individual message when I work because I do work late at night <laughs> but then I don't work sometimes in the morning or you know in the middle of the day or whatever so uh, well, can you, type, can you um, schedule when that, that email goes out <laughs> I can and I have done in the past I have got a tool that allows me to do that but then I did I came to the conclusion that uh, if I was saying you know work when best suits you then I'm allowed to do that too <laughs> but to, as you say, keep explaining that so people don't get the, yes. the wrong idea and think that I'm working 24 7 which of course is not what I'm teaching either <laughs> Yeah, I think and it makes it interesting for you that you can explain that and it's part of your your yes. charm your USP then isn't it but yeah. just the random posts that keep going out yeah it can no. Be a bit... no I absolutely agree and as you say people do make assumptions don't they which is uh, I mean you know I'm sort of jokingly saying that I make a big thing about it but I actually you know I do I talk about um you know how over the years I've realized that I'm a real sort of night owl and I, I sort of laugh and say that I used to do overtime at um in corporate quite often everyone would be going home at five o'clock and I'd be sort of gearing up to do whatever and I'd go home at like eight or nine o'clock I always just think it's because I was really committed (laughs) but now I realize it was probably that during the day there were times where I was just faffing around not really achieving very much because I hadn't got the energy to do it and then when my energy was kicking in everyone else was going home (laughs) so uh you know it's interesting isn't it when you start to really understand you know your your own patterns and what works for you Um, exactly it's like your time clock and what works so yeah perfect exactly. and it's something I mean I do a lot of of that and I mean I'm just sort of moving on to thinking about how you you know um learn and, and, and improve yourself and, and think about those sorts of things I mean I spend a lot of time thinking oh I don't think that's working I might change that or I might test that or I might trial that and I you know I always think that um you know flexibility and and uh you know looking at whether things are working for you and making changes if they're not is you know is really important so you know tell me a bit more about that with you I mean some of the things you've said already lead me to think that um you're quite self-aware and that will be uh you know informing how you do things how do you how do you learn this stuff how do you know that you need to switch your devices off at nine o'clock and things like that (laughs) I think it's just being aware of new things and and um, probably more with the people I network with and the people I, I 
um, and sort of encounter um, in the online world as well as in the physical world. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I learned from them. And, you know, as a, I would definitely say I'm a lifelong learner in that sense. Mm -hmm. And just looking at and I think as, as business owners, we're always looking for tips and helps and guidelines that's going to make something easier. Yes. And, um, you know, if we can find whatever that little nugget of information might be, then let's do it. Mm. And being open to trying it, like you were saying, you know, it, let's just try it and see. And if it makes any difference, then incorporate it and mm. build it as a habit. It's going to give you know help you. Mm. Um, why not? You know, don't think, and also being aware that what works for some one person might not work for you as well. Yeah. So you can kind of try it and try it and try it. If you think, no, this really isn't for me, then fine, it doesn't matter. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Find a way. Mm. So you talked about the, the the book that you're working through, and I, I loved that phrasing as well. You didn't say, I've read a book, or I've read a book <laughs> and I'm thinking about the concepts. You said, I'm working through it. <laughs> yeah. So is that something that you have done uh, regularly? Is that something you sort of make yourself do or is it just for this book? Or, is, you know, most people read books and never implement them, don't they? <laughs> Absolutely. And I have loads of, don't worry, I have loads of books on my bookshelf. <laughs> and I think by some sort of osmosis, I'm going to glean the information. <laughs> um, but, but sometimes some books, you know, I've sat down and read a few of the books and just fallen asleep. Um, so, but this one has, has kept me going. So I think that's a, a good one to kind of a good recommendation. Yes. Um, for you. Um, and then other ones, other ones that I found that, I mean, um, I, I found that have been really useful actually. Um, certainly if you're running a, um, a business, a small business is and a service business, um, is, um, it's called grow your service firm by Robert Craven. It's oh, not, it's not the I know Robert Craven, but yeah, I've not read the book. Mm. It's, it's a little bit old now, but actually some of the information in there is just um, practical, you know, basic advice, but in a really written down in a really good way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then there's always the E-Myth Revisited, which is good to revisit a couple, every couple of years just to keep you on track. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one for you, actually, having read the one thing. Um, there's um, one called Essentialism. Greg, oh, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, Greg McEwen, I think he is, um, the author is. And that's about, um, you know, working out a bit like with the one thing, you know, that's the what's the one thing I need to do. The essentialism is sort of a bit before that, which is, you know, how do I strip out all the stuff that's sort of quite peripheral and what, what do I actually want to be doing? What should I be doing? Um, okay. um, so that's quite good. And the other one I'm just I'm actually working through myself, um, ready for um, something I'm kicking off in September. Um, it's called The Slight Edge. And that's nice. where he talks about, you know, it's relatively simple to be successful or a failure, um, you know, either way. Um, and what, what actually sort of uh, is the thing that creates that difference? And, it, and he talks about it being a sort of philosophy of um, just sort of keeping going small sort of daily incremental actions towards wherever it is you want to go and keeping going. And the keeping going bit, I think, is a really... Uh, key piece of advice because I think quite often we give up early thinking you know it's not going to work or I've done it 10 times whatever it might be and it doesn't seem to be working and then we give up and so you talk that um I can't remember who used to go on about um not when I say the tipping point I don't mean Mike, Malcolm Gladwell but there was somebody used to talk about you know you're always this close to success but people stop just before they get to the success don't they Napoleon Hill actually um I yeah. think that that you know, it's, and you always think, oh, shall I just keep going? I'm, I'm nearly on the precipice of this. This must be nearly there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give up yet. So it it is about working through those the, the bad times as well as the good times. So mm. um, and I'm figuring out. I'm being generally inquisitive about how you can change or adapt or improve things. Yeah. 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 It's so hard, isn't it? That do I keep going or am I flogging a dead horse? That's a real like pivotal point, isn't it? <laughs> be an answer here somewhere <laughs> so on that theme what about if things don't go right when you have a bad day how do you how do you deal with that um oh well i would honestly i, would, I might go out for a walk <laughs> with, or i might have a glass of wine to be yes, honest but uh, <laughs> uh, those two probably um and or 
you know, if I'm feeling kind of energetic, um, I might just put on some loud music and do a bit of dancing or something like that. Like just that to, <laughs> yeah. A bit of disco funk or something should do the trick. So, yeah. And is that in one of those dances if no one's watching or whatever it is, uh, <laughs> scenarios? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, lovely. And what about on a day when you end the day knowing that you have lived more? And I would say that's about sort of doing the things that you really want to do, not necessarily the things that you have to do or that you should do. What, what does that day look like? Oh, look like? Um, what have you done? Whichever whichever's easiest to answer. <laughs> done is I've, I've worked with someone and made a difference and and known and and seen the the sort of the aha moments in their eyes and they've all and or they've said something they've done something they've you know explained something that you've taught them shown them you know and and you can see that they've got it and they're just like itching to get going and do something themselves and mm -hmm. to put it in to practice so whether that's sorting someone's wardrobe out or teaching uh, someone you know to be able to help them run their own businesses you know, that's what gives it it makes me have you know job satisfaction for want of a better term mm. um knowing that you know that knowing that i've made a difference yeah. and you know and they're that much further on into in, you know building their confidence improving whatever they needed to and just feeling better about themselves mm. i can imagine in your sort of uh, line of work how that you could just see that happening to somebody you know that they sort of find something that looks great and and makes them feel it's, good and you know that that just has such an impact doesn't it it's such an honor and a privilege to be able to help people do that to see the shift if someone's um from thinking that they look dowdy they're fed up you know no one looks at me kind of thing and then just you know the power of the right garment or the right bit of um, accessory or even the right lipstick can make to someone is phenomenal mm -hmm. lovely excellent well as ever the time has flown and we've come to the end of our interview so tell us how you can how people can find out more about you and how they can connect with you um, so if you're interested in seeing me privately or through your company then gailmorganstyle.com is my website there or if um, you're interested in doing some training then studyinstyletraining.com lovely thank you so uh, thank you so much for joining me it's just been um really interesting as as uh, these things usually are but you've um as ever given me some um new stuff as well i've got things to go away and look up now <laughs> I've got some books to go and buy, so thank you very much for that. <laughs> we always like to exchange these uh, actions following uh, what's supposed to be a nice little chat, but you always have to go off and do something afterwards. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, girl. Thanks, Joe. All this information is available on the show notes on the website, powertolivemore.com forward slash, in this case, 46. And the website is a place to go if you want to find out how I can help you to improve your productivity, organisation, well-being, energy and resilience, your power to live more. And that's do more of what you want to do. I've been mentioning for the last few weeks that I've got a new course that you might be interested in signing up for. I'd really encourage you to hop over there and sign up. It's free at the moment and you can get to it by going to powertolivemore.com forward slash simplify free. The course is divided into four weekly sections and it starts with thinking about uh, why you want to do the course and why simplifying your life can be helpful to you. It uh, helps you to think about finding the time. It talks about self-awareness and thinking about how you improve your life. And then there's a section about discovering your purpose and passion. And then you move on to planning your best 12 months ever. And that's from whenever you start. It doesn't have to be a January thing. It doesn't have to be a, a calendar year. It can be from whenever you get to work on that. And there's a section for vision boards. If you're the sort of person who'd be interested in doing something like that, it talks to you about how you can do that and some of the options you can use to do that, whether that's uh, offline with bits of paper and <laughs> glue and the like, or whether you want to use online versions. Uh, there's a section about manifesting and belief. 
which might be a bit woo-woo for some of you, but uh, well worth uh, having a read through at least. And then there's a, a whole section in the third week about simplifying and decluttering. And it talks about how you can simplify your life and start to uh, declutter some of the uh, things in your life around physical items, your actual things that you spend your time doing, and also your digital and computer uh uh, parts of your life because that also can be uh, something that gets cluttered and also what you do in terms of your mind um, and um, today I took a whole bootload of stuff to the local charity shop so I'm feeling like I've done well on my decluttering so far in the last few weeks. Uh, then the final week there's a section on uh, motivation to change with some tips around how you can keep yourself motivated and then a whole section about the fine art of saying no because sometimes that's how we simplify our life we just make sure that we don't say yes to too many things and then uh, a final section just to summarize what's um, gone on throughout those four weeks so I'd really encourage you to sign up for it while it's still free as I say it's uh, powertolivemore.com forward slash simplify free and there's no time limit you don't have to complete it in four weeks so feel free to just sign up and, and do it at your own pace and there's comments on every section so if you've got questions and thoughts and things that you want to share you want to have some interaction with me then um, please do I'm having quite a, a few interesting chats with some of the people that are going through the course at the moment so as I say if you'd like to go to try it out it's powertolivemore.com forward slash simplify free so again, the link for the show notes for this show is powertolivemore.com forward slash 46. And we look forward to speaking to you next time. Use your power to live more.